Hey everybody, welcome to Live Free and Tool On. On this channel, we look at tools, we review tools, we test tools out. And today we're actually going to be testing out the Ryobi Power Scrubber line. Now it's not only limited to the 18 volt power scrubbers, but also this is a little 4 volt guy. Now in general, when you look at these types of tools, you think, well, what am I going to use these for? Ryobi is really trying to bridge the gap between the garage and inside the home. I think they took their really big first step when they made their vacuum. It was really successful. I did a review on that as well, and I still have it, and I use it, and that's been a couple of years ago. But these are fairly new with the handheld scrubbers, the wand scrubbers, the small scrubbers as well, and they're making a big impact not only in the home residentially, but professionally as well because we need more tools to make our life a little better. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick overview and we're going to do a quick test with these particular tools itself. So first what we're going to take a look at is the little handheld mini scrubber. Now this is not on the 18 volt platform. This is actually just a micro USB charge. You can charge it even with your phone charger um, and you get really good run times out of it. Like I said, it's 4 volts, 7 watts, and it takes, I don't know if you can see that very well, this is a typical hex head that you would get out of a drill. It would fit right into an impact, but it's magnetic. It locks down in there well. This only weighs a pound for the tool itself, and you know, roughly I would say 1.52 pounds. So it's not going to be hard to work with. It's going to be great to keep in your kitchen drawer as well, or in your pantry, whatever you have. And then you can switch out to the different brushes. I'm going to get to the different brushes a little bit later. But for now, this is a new type of tool. Um, it is rated for under three feet of water for 30 minutes. So I believe that's IPX7 standard for these. That's really nice to have. That's why on the bottom it does have a little silicone cover. You take off to charge it, you push it back down into it when you're using it, and it's supposed to be water resistant. Um, I'm not going to test that out today, but I'll take their word on it. I'm not too uh, crazy about dousing and, and submerging my tools underwater. So, and the model number on this is P440. The next one we're going to take a look at, this is the P4510. Ryobi. Now this has the same 30 minute for th under three feet of water rating, which is the, you know the IPX7, uh, but this one is a little bit more heavy duty. When you take a look at these tools on all three of the tools, their buttons are integrated. Ooh, things over here. Uh, the buttons are actually integrated in the rubber over mold covering, so that's going to help whenever it does get wet and provide a little bit more protection for the tool. This one is a lot more different and I think it has a lot better protections as well because the battery is actually encapsulated and it has gaskets that go all the way around so that's really going to help with keeping water outside of this tool. But the main part of these tools right now that I see is that their quality and if you notice here this is not a hex head this is actually called the triangle lock and that's when we get into these big scrubbers right here. So they actually lock in. You turn it to lock it into place. There, there's, a, uh, there's a grip zone here. So then it locks into place. So it's not a hex head to where it could you know, strip out a lot easier. They know that this is going to put out a lot more torque. So they came up with a new locking system for your brushes. Now if we look at this bad boy, this is something that you can extend, turn it here, and extends out. Now this is really cool because this gives you a great reaching capacity. And let's see how long this is. Full length, this is 56 inches long at its longest, and at its shortest, it's 43 inches. Something else really great about this tool is that it has a push button here, head adjustment. Now this has the same motor as this guy here. This turns at 210 rotations per minute. 
Now I know that seems slow, especially if you're used to cordless tools. However, the reason why they do that, and this is just my theory, I didn't design this stuff, I just use it, is that you shouldn't have that much RPMs when you're cleaning because you want to protect what you're cleaning. You don't want to start to chafe it or start to strip things away unnecessarily. You want to have that controlled cleaning ability. Now, moving down the line here, you do have an adjustable handle. So you can, it's, there's a little thumb pin over here. You can just adjust it back and forth so you have a lot of good ergonomics there, especially when you're extending it and if you're cleaning a wall or if you're using it to clean a floor as well. This has the same rubber over molding and the button and this also features the same uh, battery encasement system. Now the model number for this is P4500. This is a pretty interesting tool just because you can coil it out. It's very versatile. I use it on floors. I use it on walls. I use it for a lot of stuff. It also has the triangle lock on the end. I didn't think I was going to use it as much, uh, but I find myself using it all the time. Not only do I use it on floors such as uh, hardwood, mostly tile, concrete, things like that. I actually use it on carpet as well. If I have a really tough stain, my carpet cleaner is not getting it out. I'll attach the general medium style brush and I'll just get after it and it works out great. There's three main types of brushes for the bigger tools and for the smaller tools. You, and these are the bristle types. Now, for the larger tools, this is a six inch uh, diameter style of brush, but this, the blue one, this is actually a really soft, it's, it's pretty supple uh, type of brush. You would use this on delicate things uh, if you're trying to clean, polish a little bit. Now, I wouldn't say polish, but maybe some wood if you're going to use Murphy's oil, uh, bar mate, things like that. This is your standard medium brush. This is what actually comes with the tools itself. This is good for a myriad of things. If you want to scrub things, it's not too hard on, on objects. You can see it. I can rub my hand through it pretty easily. I can move it down. It's kind of hard to see. I understand that. But this is your general purpose brush. Now the black brush, this is pretty intense. This is a more of a really st uh, stiff standard brush. I use this for concrete. Um, I use this on harder surfaces, you know, brick, uh, mortar type of deal, and it gets a lot of stains out really well. So keep that in mind whenever you're getting these. I went ahead, I got all of them because I use it for a bunch of different things. My wife uses these probably the most, and I'm really trying to get her in on the Ryobi Nation and, you know, kind of get in on these cordless tools because I don't want her to give me a hard time every time I keep buying tools. Uh, I kid, but I mean, it's kind of true, you know. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get into testing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the hard bristled um, style brush. I have a concrete floor in my garage. I have some stains on the floor. I have some rust on the floor. And I'm going to see how good we can get this out. I understand that the chemicals that I'm going to use are going to play the biggest part in this because that's how it's going to... Uh, be able to lift the stains depending on the compounds things like that then uh, after we get done with the floor testing we're going to go upstairs and i actually have a really old countertop and it's tile in order for me to really clean the tile and the grout i need to use this little guy because it gets in the crevices and like i said before there's three styles of brushes but man i tell you are three types of brushes, but there's a lot of style of these brushes. They have them as cones, they have them as toilet bowl scrubbers, uh, especially for these hex heads right here. So, you know, here's actually a picture. It's going to show you all the different styles, and, you know, maybe that's something that you can use. So, once we clean the tile, then we're going to head on over uh, to the soft bristle brush, and that's where I'm going to use the handheld, bigger uh, version of the tool with a six inch soft brush and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean one of my wooden solid doors upstairs it's got a lot of stains on it man I have a lot of kids and they cause a mess so we're going to go ahead we're going to put that on we're going to try and shine up the door make it look good as new or better than new I'm hoping and that's going to be really delicate on that nice woodwork upstairs so let's get into it okay as you can see I have rust here some old rust new rust I've got just some general dirt stains over here. Over here I have um, old spray paint. I don't think I'm going to get that up. And then I have 
general paint here. Pretty sure I'm not going to get that up. But let's go ahead and spray this all down. Alright, so I have this extended all the way out so it's a little more comfortable. Let's turn it on. It's pretty quiet. Alright, first one I'm going to do is just kind of spread it out. Alright, let's let it sit just for a few minutes. Let the chemicals work. And then we're going to come back and we're just going to scrub the heck out of it. So it took me a minute, but I had to dry everything up. I washed it down, washed all the dirt and everything away that I scrubbed off, and I had to get a blower on it, a floor blower, in order to dry this off. But So let's take a look at a photo of the before, and you can see that there was a pretty heavy rust stain there. There's a lot of markings on the floor. Uh, now let's take a look at the after, and right now you can see that it took that big rust stain pretty much all the way down just to a slight uh, kind of memory of it or a silhouette of what it was, kind of what this other one is here. Uh, we still have a lot of, uh, you know, stains and stuff here, but it lightened it up pretty good. Uh, did it do anything to this paint? No, it just cleaned the paint. And here, just, you know, <laughs> cleaned the paint up pretty good. But like I said before, it's all in the chemicals that you're using the biggest portion of this that you need to pay attention to, this is a pretty abrasive concrete floor. The machine didn't stop, it didn't bog down too much, um, and it didn't lock up. So the torque on the actual scrubber itself overcome uh, the resistance of this particular uh, you know, surface, which is concrete, and it's really rough. And I had the stiff bristles on it too, so you know, I'm going to give it a really good thumbs up on this one. I think it did a very good job. Okay, so this is an interesting situation. I haven't remodeled the kitchen yet, but I do need to keep it clean. Uh, right now, we have a tiled kitchen countertop. And as everyone knows, when you have a tiled kitchen countertop, you get a lot of stuff in the grout, and it just makes it look absolutely terrible. Now, this is the edge of it, and you can see I have a lot of buildup here. I need to clean that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spray it down. With the, with the foam and I'll do a little bit of the grout too here and let's just let it sit and work for a minute and while that's sitting let's talk about my methodology here first I'm going to use the hard bristled brush and this is on the little 4 volt system here and we're going to get down into the cracks and crevices and I want to start to break it up and then we're going to come back and we're going to switch out the brushes and this is the medium brush and this is going to be able to wipe things away a, a lot better and get all the crevices and cracks out just because it's a little softer a little more malleable
Okay, so in general, I think it did a great job. I think there could have been a, a lot better cleaning solution in order to get in here to whiten it up. But the point of this is that I was able to really press down on this brush to get into these crevices. Now, it's, it took a lot of the grime off of here. And that's really good because let's take a look at this one. You can see what it you know, kind of looked like before. And it took off that much more. You can see kind of what the some of the grime look like there and what it looks like here. So you got a nice little side by side. So in general, it did do a good job. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. It really cleaned the wood very nice. Um, and it cleaned the tiles really nice as well. So for this test, we're gonna use the smaller version. This still has the same motor as the extended version of it. And I'm gonna use the soft bristle, bristle brush and I'm actually going to be using Murphy's oil soap. This works really good, especially for wood. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of marks on this door. Uh, that's because I have six kids and kids do a lot of stuff and they're really dirty. So you got to keep this going. Now, how I'm actually going to be doing this one is I'm going to spray onto the soft brush or brush and then I'm going to apply it. And as it spins, it's going to start removing things and we're going to get into it that way. So let's go ahead and get started. And I may have to do this throughout the uh, clip. I want to take a minute and just say with a soft bristle brush, you're able to get into all those cracks and crevices, something that you typically wouldn't be able to do. And it's so soft, it can actually wipe things away. You can see there's a lot of different crevices and cracks here. Let's get a little bit of a close up as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. I really got into all the crevices. Now that's a really good cleaning product because it treats wood, it's safe for wood, and it removes a lot of the stains. So um, as you can see, I did work this in. I buffed all of those stains out. It actually had a lot of chalk on the door because my kids got a little you know, crazy one day and decided to write on it with chalk. Um, but then after I was done scrubbing, I did wipe it down with a towel just to remove any excess there but this was able to scrub it really well and it was soft it was uh, safe for wood and that's the main point so as you can see the before picture and now let's look at a side by side after you can tell it really made a big difference and like I said the cleaning product did the most uh, but this allowed enough strokes and enough passes to remove a lot of that chalk and to make the door look just that much better and uh, hopefully we can keep it like this for at least a day or two. All right, so I'm gonna wrap the video up right here in the kitchen, right in front of this door. Man, does it look so much better than what it did. Uh, let's talk about pricing real quick. You can get these at Home Depot, they're in store. This little guy right here is gonna cost you 50 bucks and you know it comes with everything that you need in order to get it done. It does come with a medium style, the green uh, bristles. So that's where you can get that. This is the same thing, get it right at Home Depot, it's in store, and the problem that you're gonna have with this is it doesn't come with a battery right off the bat, but you're gonna be able to get the base tool by itself for $70, then you gotta get a battery if you don't get a bundle uh, where it comes with the battery itself. Now the one that I don't have with me is the long uh, telescoping scrubber for the walls and floors. You can get that one for $100 at Home Depot. They do have them in stock in most stores. But um, it doesn't come with a battery, so you're going to have to buy a battery pack there. I think that they're worth it. I think that this is going to take 
uh, a lot of work out of cleaning for you. It's going to make your work so much more efficient and you're going to be able to get things done the way that you want to and probably a little bit better than what you could do with your hands. So really keep that in mind. If your time is valuable and you want to get more strokes as these turn than what you would with a hand scrubbing back and forth, really consider it. I think it's uh, something that you're really going to not regret. As you can see, I have my shirt. This is a Scrub-A-Dub-Dub shirt. It has the uh, power scrubber on the front of it. If you'd like to buy one of these, head over to my channel. I have great custom stickers. I have hats. I've got shirts. Just check them out. I think you're really going to get a kick out of them. And lastly, please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, tune into the next one, and we'll see you then. Take care, everybody.